Not gonna ever take a game off of China. Not gonna ever take a game off of Korea. Lucky to ever beat Europe. I mean, I don't wanna give too much copium because- And then there were three. Two teams still fighting for that final spot at MSI, waiting for the chance to get their bout with FlyQuest for the LCS Spring Split title. Welcome back to the pit. Didn't want to have to do this, but here we are. Can I tell you all about it when I see you again? I'll have a full rendezvous video out on Wednesday that goes over everything 100 Thieves for this past weekend and the split in general. But this 3-1 series was closer than people might make it out to be. Yes, TL won the hands check at a lot of different points in time, but it's not like 100 Thieves weren't getting their advantages at different points other than game one. Game one was a complete stomp in Team Liquid's favor. But you can't be upset with how this 100 Thieves team performed. You had so many people thinking that they were going to be dead last in this league and they come out fourth. Like... For rookie splits, for sniper, for the second split, for Quid, who as of this moment, we don't know whether he's going to win MVP or not. But I think it's the big question on people's minds, whether it's going to be him, Inspired, or somebody else. We'll see. But for 100 Thieves, this was a successful split. Like, I know people are going to be disappointed by the second place finish in regular season, then dropping down to fourth. And there will be some people that called him frauds. But at the end of the day, they beat NRG and they had a close series against Team Liquid. That's not frauds. That's rookies learning how to play on this big stage. They finished exactly where Team Liquid did last split with APA and Yawn. I have full faith that they will continue to grow. Not much else to say on it right now. The other massive game from this weekend was FlyQuest's 3-0 stomp of Cloud9. I'll be honest with you, Cloud9 looked lost. The thing that I don't get about Cloud9 specifically, and I know there's going to be a lot of C9 fans that like see this and are like, oh, you're hating on C9. Like, no, I want them to be good. But like, it was so... Bluntly clear that like Judge of Pium was getting camped all series. Like they were investing a ton of resources into making sure that Judge Oak couldn't do anything this game. So what needs to happen in return for that? Well, Berserker needs to get ahead and Fudge needs to get ahead, especially when Fudge is playing carry champions. Berserker did get some of those advantages in lane. They were able to take advantage of Meech and Masu pretty much consistently throughout the series. Well, there, uh, there were a few times in bot lane where Vulcan uh, didn't have the best moments. But point being that if FlyQuest is going to invest all their resources mid lane, you have to get something elsewhere. And when, but when they didn't and they weren't able to do anything or like get a pressure release valve somewhere else in a different lane, like what are you gonna do? FlyQuest plan is working. They're camping Jojo Pune and they're going even elsewhere. Yeah, they're gonna win fights later. Like, of course. The most most egregious example of this would be in game three where Fudge is on a carry champion in Olaf. I didn't like it in the comp. I'll just say that. But he's 2-0. and And then you look across it and, and you would think, okay, 2-0 top laner? Hell yeah. He's going to be able to carry the game. You look across the aisle, put those three levels up on him. Like what? On top of that, Jensen, deathless series the dude is playing out of his mind i don't think he got the respect he deserved in the regular season i'll be completely honest but my dude is just unbelievable the other notable call out inspired played like a madman and i got the chance to talk to him after their series win so how you feeling first finals back uh, yeah i mean uh, feels feels good feels good because we already made them aside i don't really care about winning speed that much i like the biggest point for me was to make it to msi but uh, um, so we managed to do it. So I think that's like the first series that I'm pretty happy about. Because honestly, when we're winning regular season games and then when we beat TL, I was like, yeah, whatever. Like it absolutely means nothing. So right now I'm actually happy. It, it's fun, fun to win a series that matters. And uh, yeah, I'm hyped for China. We'll see who we play next week. Uh, I think uh, I still don't think we're like as much better as C9 than we were today. I think we just had good prep, they had pretty bad prep, and we kind of outplayed them in some situations. So I'm still looking forward to the final against them. I think uh, they should probably beat Team Liquid and they should play better in the final. So I assume it won't be that free next time. Interesting because uh, Jensen did an interview on stage and said the exact opposite. He is a, he's a big fl uh, Team Liquid believer now going into next weekend mm -hmm. after what he just played against. I mean, it was kind of a mismatch, I, I get it, but... I think I just shit on Jojo today, and I, I think he's going to make fun of Team Liquid mid jungle, and he will actually carry the games, so we'll see. Even with TL notably stepping up, I mean, I know it was kind of like a, a slop in the mud fest yesterday, but they notably have looked a lot better than they than they did uh, weeks ago. Yeah, I mean, they're definitely really good as a team. They have very high tempo during the game, 
and uh, it's really annoying to play against them. But uh, their mechanical level is not as good as C9, at least in mid and AD position. I think if uh, if the games will be stable and it won't be a complete chaos, I feel like Jojo will be the one making an athlete for C9 to win. That's why I'm still a believer of C9. But yeah, there there's a there is like a teamwork uh, aspect of of Team Liquid. I feel like they 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 know how to play League of Legends. Like they know how to push sideline and use the tempo and uh, try to try to snowball from that and like never let you really make plays. You just always have to answer their plays. That's how I felt like when we played against them. But I don't know if it will work. We'll see. I think if Jojo makes a difference, then uh, it will be hard. But if he doesn't, I guess TL will just win. Yeah. It was interesting on broadcast. They put up a graphic comparing yeah. Masu to an unknown AD carry who had an absurd amount of damage share. KDA was ridiculous in his first ever playoff split. And it was actually Danny. And yeah, I know. there's a lot of parallels to FlyQuest now to EG back in 2022. What do you feel like is both different and similar since you were a part of both of them uh, in the I runs mean, to where where you're at now? I mean, uh, to me, like, uh, I think me and Wipo are just really good and we are just carrying them up. Uh, I think uh, that's how it was on EG as well. I think me and Impact were just carrying. I think uh, we are, I mean, I'm just really good at the, like, reading the map and knowing what my teammates should be doing. So, I mean, even as you could see, our bottom was kind of losing lane most of the games, like game one and three. And uh, it was very similar with Danny. But I'm always like, I always see angles to like low-key come back to the games when it's not looking too good or how to play out the class situations. So I think that's why we were successful on EG. And I think that's why we are successful on FlyQuest now. Because uh, I, I do believe that if Cloud9 is better as a team, they should never lose games. Like, I think their AD carry is really, really good. And he really knows how to play the game. And Jojo is... Uh, making a big uh, big like pressure point in the game. So I do believe if they play better as a team, it should be really hard to beat them, but they just don't have anyone that would be like connecting them to each other. I feel like uh, Blabber is just playing his own game. He doesn't really like uh, make them play together while Fudge does exactly the same. I think Fudge is not really caring about the game too much. He just cares about his lane and how he wants to play out his matchup while Buipo is just... Uh, uh, just like lulling around and he knows what angles he should go for, what he should do for the game in order to win. And I think that's like the biggest difference maker. I think me and Wipo are just making too many plays that sometimes people just can't uh, keep up with us. It was, I noticed in game three, Wipo was like level 17. Like you look at Olaf and you say, okay, Olaf's 2-0 and 3. Like going into a fight, they, Cloud9 was like down a little bit of goal, but not a lot. It's like, okay, that's not bad. Then you look at the level discrepancy and it's like, Blippo's three levels ahead of everybody. And it's like, what? Yeah. where did this come from? What happened here? Yeah, Blippo is really good at, uh, like when I tell him, for example, to look for TP, he will be like, mm, I think I will get more lead here if I don't TP. And then I'm like, okay, sure, don't TP. We're gonna uh, like try to play maybe 4v5 or like bait enemies to fight us. You just like get the stuff on opposite side. And then when he actually sees that he can't get too much advantage while staying in the sideline, then he will uh, just look for some creative plays. So I think that's like the best part about him that he's not like an NPC that follows what you say. Because a lot of top players are like, you tell them to TP and they will be, they, they will not think about their lane state at all. And they'll be like, okay, TP. And then in the review, they're like, oh, but you told me to TP. So I just TP. Well, he has like a good eye and he's like, I don't think it's that good for me. I think I will just stay here. And then in the other situation, be like, oh, I think here I can TP and fight first. So I, I think you just have a really good read of the game. And that's why, and I think those kind of aspects make you, get like slightly slightly slight leads in like important games because enemy might hesitate a bit while you are like uh, committed to your play and you like get uh, extra wave extra two waves extra tower or stuff like that and then it snowballs to a little bigger re leads as you could see like uh, he, as you said he was like three levels up on everyone so i think uh, he's just good at judging situations what do you think it says about ownership and management in the lcs that you two are probably the best players in your roles going into finals in your first split back after having to, you know, take a back seat last year due to, you know, just not getting on teams. Like, what does that yep. say about the state of the LCS that you guys just come back and immediately are just like that on top again? 
Mm, I mean, I think uh, Bupo was really misunderstood on Team Liquid. I think his mid jungle were very American. They were not liking to make plays, while Bupo is the guy that wants to make plays when it's possible. He likes to play to the limits. He doesn't like to... Like, a lot of his deaths are actually deaths that open the tempo for other people to play the game. But if other people don't play the game on those tempo that he creates, then it looks like he's just hinting. So I think that was kind of bad on Team Liquid that this mid jungle was playing very slowly while he was creating pressure points and people were just not using it well. So I think and that's why he maybe didn't look as good uh, on Team Liquid. And uh, what it says about the management, I, I don't know. Honestly, I, I on EG, I think it was like not really a management decision. I was ready to to play with a pay cut because uh, EG was like running out of money, but uh, they still uh, didn't want to play me. They decided to sign other junglers and play with them. Uh, so yeah, I just decided to to chill and uh, and uh, not really go to another team because I just didn't feel the need. I felt like uh, I don't want to play on a bad team. I'm still under contract, so it's not like I'm not I'm losing money on stuff. So I just said okay, I, I will just sit on the bench and see what happens. They never wanted to use me, which was very weird to me because I think if they they decided to play me, we would for sure make worlds. Like me and Jojo would for sure make EG go worlds. Like we would not lose to Team Liquid there, but they didn't do that. And with Bipo, as I said, I think people just thought he's bad because he looked bad on Team Liquid. Well, I think it was his teammates' fault why he looked like that. So now that you guys are locked for MSI, the expectations and the conversations around what can NA do internationally are going to come hot and heavy. What do you have? Yeah. What do you have to say to people that are going to just look at North America and say, "Not going to ever take a game off of China. Not going to ever take a game off of Korea. Lucky to ever beat Europe." I, I mean, I don't want to give too much copium because I still think we are not that insane. Like, I think if we're gonna play against Chinese team, that top jungler actually playing the game and they are very aggressive. In our bottling, will have struggles in lane. I think it's gonna be way harder to play. I think uh, this MSI will give a lot of knowledge to Masu and Busia, though, because right now I think NALCS bot lanes are just trash and they are not improving anything. Like me and Bipo are memeing about it, but we are like every day laughing at bot lanes, saying that me and Bipo, if we go bot lane, will be best bot lane in NA. But, uh, uh, but I, it might actually not be a meme. But uh, so that's why our bot lane can't really improve too much either because uh, enemies are like handshaking, uh, weird situations, weird trades uh, and stuff like that. So I feel like if they actually will play against good players in scrims and, and during the tournament, they should get a lot of learning from that. So I wouldn't go into tournament feeling too confident. I think it will be a learning process for us and because uh, I know how it is to go for the first time to international tournament. So I think uh, it's really good for us to make it looking uh, to work. I think uh, we should improve a lot of the MSI. If we manage to get a good result, that's nice. But uh, but it's not like my goal. I think the biggest goal is to learn a lot from this tournament. Gotcha. Uh, any final words for the FlyQuest fans? I just got a 30-second warning. But uh, we're going to be having a watch party here in New York City with a bunch of FlyQuest fans attending. So any any final message to the fans heading into finals? I mean, uh, I'm happy you guys are supporting us and I will do everything I can to finally win a trophy for FlyQuest because it's been a while that FlyQuest is trying, building super teams and then not succeeding. But hopefully this split is a split. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. Congratulations on the win. Go get some rest and uh, get ready for next week's, uh, next week's brawl. Before we get into previewing the upcoming weekend, one last announcement as I've been consistently doing. We are having an LCS Finals watch party here in New York City. It is actually now sponsored by FlyQuest, not entirely, like everybody obviously is welcome to come, but FlyQuest is sending us a few things to give away to fans, so please come on by, it's a free giveaway, but also I am going to do something for FlyQuest diehard fans. We're going to have a FlyQuest hype zone, which is going to be like one section specifically blocked off for FlyQuest fans if they want to sit there, you don't obviously have to, but I want like FlyQuest to feel like they have their own home section. And if you're wearing any FlyQuest apparel, or even if you do face paint, like paint a FlyQuest thing on your face, something, like you need to be showing that you're a FlyQuest fan in some way, whether it's a sign or anything else that you make when you come in beforehand, I'm gonna have a special raffle and giveaway for the FlyQuest fans only. So come out, show your hype, you might win something special from the organization itself, and you might also win your first LCS title. But for everybody else, 100 Thieves fans included, even if you're an Optic fan, way back in the day and you don't really have a team, doesn't matter. Come out, enjoy Easter Sunday with us, and have a good time watching the LCS Finals.
I made a prediction before this week happened that I think the winner of Team Liquid versus whoever they would end up facing at, after the FlyQuest Cloud9 match would go on to win finals. And while I'm a little bit hesitant on that, I've seen enough from past years of LCS to know that no matter how good FlyQuest looked in their 3-0 here, I'm not sold that they're going to win at all. I'm really not, especially after uh, Inspired's comments of like, you know, I got, I got the thing that I wanted. Like winning finals would be great, but like for him, like it's not mentally the same thing. And there's one particular squad that I think if they can face up against them, will have that edge and will be able to beat them out and will also have the revenge angle. And that's Team Liquid. I was not impressed by Cloud9 at all this past weekend. I think their drafting is still really, really bad. At this point, just put Fudge on tank duty. Like, put Berserker on a hyper carry like Zeri, but don't put it with an Alistar and carry champions elsewhere. Like, put it with a Lulu or Enchanter support that can help keep him alive, and then put tanks in top and Engager and jungle and mid. Give Jojo Pune literally whatever. He will carry on it regardless. And if they camp him, then so what? He'll still be able to do something later, and you have this protect the president comp because that's what Berserker can do for your team. I don't know why they're not drafting like that. It's beyond me, but because of that, I think Team Liquid takes this series pretty handedly. APA has continued to step up the entirety of playoffs. That first series against FlyQuest, yeah, he didn't look great, but you know what? He was still getting in people's heads, and he was still making a difference, but Yawn and Core JJ perform well in their series against 100 Thieves, also perform well in their series against Dig, smashed it. This bot lane, I'm willing to say, is the best bot lane in the LCS, hands down. And I think they're going to gap Cloud9's bot lane, especially early, which is wild to say, because you would never assume that about Berserker and Vulcan, but we already saw moments where Meech and Masu could take over. Yawn is on a different level compared to every other ADC in playoffs right now. Impact, as always, does a good job at nullifying aggressive top laners. And literally what I just saw in the FlyQuest series this past weekend is what I've been expecting from Fudge this entire season. Where it's like, when he's on a champion where he has to carry, then it's a problem. They aren't able to do it. In jungle, Blabber hasn't looked phenomenal i don't know he, he's had moments where he's looked good but like i don't know they're just cloud nine as a whole like there's no individual player that i'm looking at saying like they're performing really really bad they're just not performing well as a team and i feel like tl is coming together at the right moment so i'm saying team liquid 3-1 cloud nine will get a game where they actually have a draft that they do protect the president but i just i don't have faith at this point that they understand how to play together as a team, there's too, either too many cooks in the kitchen, too many egos, so, like something's going on. But the way that Cloud9 wins this is playing through goddamn Berserker. The dude can carry you this series. Just draft to protect him. You do that and you're fine. Drop the ego. Stop picking Olaf. Pick a tank top. Pick, like, I don't even care if you're on Shen the entire series. Like literally just split push, protect Zeri, Bane, Aphelios, whatever Berserker wants to play to carry this damn series, do it. And guess what? He's going to get natural advantages. So then jo that will leave some pressure off of Jojo, as Jojo's going to get camped, as he always does. But if you have this threat in bot lane, well, guess what? They all of a sudden have to start putting some resources down there, and that'll free up Jojo Pune to actually do something. So I, like, even though, like, it sounds like I'm really heavily TL favored, I just want to see C9 do the thing that I know they need to do to win. And it, like, if they do that and they win this series, then I'm perfectly fine with that. Although I don't think C9 stands a chance against FlyQuest. However, if TL wins, I do have faith. It's just that mental edge for whatever reason like there you're coming back you have the advantage of playing the series the day prior your hands are a little bit warmer apa is going to talk non-stop shit the entire time and i feel like for FlyQuest, like there's this load off the shoulders of like huh we made msi for busio and masu not as much they want to win an lcs title but for whippo and this top side that has been smashing everybody around the lcs yeah i, I legitimately think it'll be a, a little bit different from them and there won't be as much worry or pressure Whereas with TL, there is this hunger to get there, clearly. So that's my official prediction for this weekend. If Team Liquid beats Cloud9, Team Liquid is winning the LCS. If Cloud9 beats Team Liquid, FlyQuest is winning the LCS. But that's it for the pit in the regular season here. Obviously, I'll still have an episode next week kind of going over everything and recapping uh, the weekend that was. But 
for now at least that's it here give me your predictions down below who's going to finals who do you think takes it all we'll talk about msi at a later time for now let's focus on getting through spring split and crowning our champion and our number one seed heading into msi thank you for watching catch you later